So welcome uh, to the DUI virtual trade show day two. Um, so if you're just joining us and you missed uh, the opening introduction by Thomas Dietrichs, um, it is immediately available on Facebook Live. Uh, we will be posting all of the sessions from yesterday and today onto our, fa our Facebook, our YouTube channel, uh, so you can watch these later on. So up next um, is Pete Naraki. Uh, but I just want to remind everybody, if you are watching on Facebook Live, there is a link that you can jump onto the Zoom portion of this, um, where you have access to ask the same questions uh, that you could on, on Facebook Live. But also at the same time, you can go into different breakout rooms with the different uh, DUI staff at that point in time if you need to talk to them individually. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to introduce Pete Naraki. Um, and Pete, before you get started, just like yesterday, I wanted everyone to kind of just give a brief intro of, of who you are uh, so people understand uh, who you are and where, where you've been diving and what is your passion uh, the thing you're passionate about in diving. So Pete, so welcome. Thanks, Jack. Well, my, my title officially is I'm the OMS sales manager for DUI. I'm also the, OMS, the uh, DUI account manager for the entire Eastern Seaboard. Uh, apparently I have nothing to do, so they just keep thumping it more on me, but that's okay. It's always a good time. I've been passionate about diving and I've been teaching diving and still teaching diving since 1979. One of my passions happens to be underwater photography. But my bigger passion is actually sharing with other divers, going diving with anybody at any level, introducing people to the sport. One of the great things in my life, I got to introduce my daughter into diving. And now I'm looking forward to hopefully introducing my granddaughter into diving. So I've worked with people on CCR, side mount, dry suits, and just going out and having a good time. So with, with that, where, where are we going today? Well, you get stuck with me for the next four hours if you're really that bored, but I'll give you a lot of information. And, and we're, we're approaching this a little bit differently. I'm not gonna give you death by PowerPoint on everything, but sometimes it's easier to see an overview of a product by sharing a screen that way. And as you can see behind me, yeah, there's a lot of toys hanging there and we'll look at it. And, and part of what I really want to cover is not so much the product, but where they've made improvements. When I first started working as a sales manager for DUI, Thomas came up to me and he's like, well, we're relaunching the line. I'm like, that's really great. What have you changed? He's like, nothing. And I'm like, well, it's been the same for 20 years. So after a while, people might start looking someplace else. It's like, well, the line was brought back so that people could accept what they were used to seeing what they were comfortable with. And then it came down to, we'll make changes, but it's not necessarily cosmetic. The one thing I love working with Thomas about, it's we wanna make it better. We wanna find a different way of doing it, but we wanna maintain consistency. So if you bought a wing five, six, seven years ago, it will still fit any harness that we're making today. We, we kept it consistent that way. So you're not forced. The other thing too about the line, this truly is all about you, your type of diving, the way you want to go and where do you want to go to tomorrow? So let me give you a classic example. And yeah, I'll be running all over my office looking for stuff. This is the original I IQ pack. It was a soft, simple harness, very lightweight, and for a long time, it worked really well, and it comes in a variety of sizes. Now, over time, you learn that there's, and everybody loves this term, failure points. Well, the fellows at NASA pointed out to the fact that, hey, you know, there, there's a gap all the way here in the back, and, and that's not really going to work. These are stretching out ripping, okay? We take note of that. People are traveling. Well, the original padding absorbed so much water, it took a day to dry. And you want to get back on the plane as quickly as possible. Water is weight. 
And trust me, TSA is never happy when you're leaving a trail of salt water while you're walking up the plank trying to put your gear through the uh, x-ray machine. And there are wear points on harnesses made by anybody. Anytime you have a combination of metal and nylon, that winds up being a wear point. And we looked at that and it's like, well, this is stitched. So the consumer cannot easily change this. So now, now it grows up and we're looking at different things. We get different product. And actually the first iteration on that, we called it the IQ light. It weighs half of what we were working with when it came down to the IQ pack itself. We stretched the, stretch, the stitching down, the pad, this extra layer of nylon all the way down to firm it up. And the guys who really pushed on this was actually the divers at the neutral buoyancy lab. They use NASA in their tank uses a lot of OMS gear. So like, okay, that, that works. Some people don't like the epaulette on this side. They have their own idea. And this, once again, we're thinking about what you're doing. So you can actually, without having to take the whole unit apart, you can pull the epaulette out, move it up, move it down, move it right, move it left, and then make your particular change there. These are not plastic. These are actually adenized aluminum, and they are welded, so they won't come apart easily. This is all the stuff you're looking at in order to make improvements that make sense to the diver. Also, instead of going with the original flat ring, we have a slight bend in the ring. This way, it's easier for you to clip on and find or get your glove underneath in order to find it and clip it off. This attachment point, this wear point over here, you can replace this entire sheet of webbing. This will come out. We actually sell a kit that you can replace the whole deal or add on to it a cummerbund if that's what you decide. Or if you bought one with a cummerbund and say, well, now I want to take that unit and I want to dive it someplace else and I only really need the two inch webbing, you can go in reverse. So we, we've taken that modularity into just about every level on the size of the unit. Even the padding on the unit is actually, this does not absorb water. So it'll dry very, very quickly. So moving forward, what I wanna do, I'm gonna share my screen and jump into a few things here. When you're showing the products like that, for some reason, when you're, when you're just where your head's pointed right at this moment, when you angle the gear at slight angle like that, it shows up better on the camera. Okay, I, I just changed the lighting too. So let me let me get into my screen here, get this out of the way. And this is, by the way, my contact information that's on there. You can get me right on my cell phone. Yes, and if you call at three o'clock in the morning, I won't be answering the phone because the phone is off at that time. So I'm, I'm smarter than that. Or you can always hit me up with email later on. We'll talk about all the different harnesses how they work, what the functionality is. We'll go through the key features, the components, and the most important thing is choosing the appropriate size for you, men and women. We, we look at these harnesses, even though in a lot of ways they're unisex, it has to fit the individual's torso shape and it has to work with you so that you can actually do the type of diving you wanna do and have it grow with you, which means you have to understand some of the key accessories. So here's our three basic harness styles we have. The IQ Lite, the Comfort Harness 3, and the Smart Stream. And we'll go through them one at a time. But here's the notes on some of the harnesses. All the air cells are interchangeable with every harness. When we looked at the IQ Lite, the IQ Lite with a 27 pound wing and a size medium large with the six pound pockets weighs approximately six pounds. We're trying to cut the weight down. The Comfort Harness 3 and the Smart Stream actually use a backplate, either aluminum or stainless steel. All the harnesses are compatible with double cylinders. If you'd like to do that type of diving, I'll get into how the soft harness actually works with doubles while we go through it. The grommets are 11 inches on center, which is pretty much the industry standard. That's the same grommet 
distance that you have on the wings also. So, and, and people do, and, and there's no issue with it. I'll have people that want to use our harness and somebody else's wing or vice versa. It's that 11 inch distance that allows you to do that. It does work because the mounting on most CCR systems, I, I actually dive a Sidewinder and I use the Comfort Harness 3 setup on it because that's most comfortable for me. And I didn't have to do anything to adapt to it. I just really just set everything up and it worked really easy. If you like to use a single tank adapter, we also have those. You can add weight pockets and accessory pockets. You know, when you get the unit, it's, it's basically sold as a basic unit and then you add to it on what you need. And you don't need tools in order to make everything fit. And you fit it to your body shape. So let's take a look at the IQ Light itself. It's a soft fabric design. It's good for traveling divers. Just the unit itself weighs two and a quarter pounds. Now the new one for 2020, the difference between the one I was showing you, we actually have trim pockets on the back. So you no longer have to carry an extra small pocket with you in order to add to the unit, which goes on to the cam bands on the back. And the biggest problem with those, and I keep watch people on the boat, you know, we, we dive, Thomas and I dive with a lot of people and we, we like to see where, where are they struggling? How do you make it better? Well, when you have the trim pocket located on the cam band and you've got two pounds in there, it's gonna sag. And it can make it a little bit difficult moving easily from tank to tank, particularly on a rough day. With the trim pockets built into the harness, it's all now one unit and you can move it easily from one side to the other. And more importantly, because you usually don't fill them all up. They hold two pounds each. Most people don't fill it up because this is not ditchable weight. So you have to be caring, careful in your dive planning that you're not carrying so much weight on your harness that you can't ditch it if you have a problem on the surface. So this is just, it's actually for trim. That's why they're called trim pockets. So if you have a problem where you tend to be always, your feet tend to go up a little bit too high, you're not comfortable that way, you can put the weight on the lower pockets, that'll flatten you out. For most people, the problem is, is that their feet are dragging and by putting the, trim, the weights on the upper trim pockets will actually allow you to flatten out a little bit easier in the water. It comes with three two inch D-ring standard and two one inch D-rings, which by the way, I'll, I'll show you in a few minutes, They're actually on Velcro, so you can move them up, down, right, left on how you want, ever want to work with it. And the shoulders are padded. So when you're traveling diver, I mean, you, you're not wearing a dry suit with 300 weight undergarment underneath it. Well, some of you are, but not everybody. All right. Uh, Jack does. But, you know, now, now at this point, you can go off and make your dive. And if you just wanted to wear a light T-shirt or, or just a shorty, you'll still have some padding on the shoulders, which by the way, the padding is really only effective when you're sitting on the boat and you stand up. Once you're in the water, you're basically hanging from the harness at this point. You won't even feel the shoulder straps. Now it does come with a one inch crotch strap and you can add a one and a half inch crotch strap. And one of the first questions I, I always get from new students or people just starting to dive with a harness type system is how tight should the crotch strap be? Well, here's the simplest answer. It should, it should introduce itself to the neighborhood, but not divide the neighborhood. And that's as far as I'm going, all right? It does have a sternum strap. And the function of the sternum strap is when you put the unit on, it keeps the shoulders going straight down over your shoulders. That sternum strap locks it in place. And for those of you who are underwater photographers, the whole idea with a harness system is when you put your arms forward, you don't feel the tank right up and hit you in the back of the head. If you're carrying a deco bottle, bailout bottle, when you go to clip it off or unclip it, it's easy to reach across because the harness isn't going to compress. Remember, when you're diving with a harness style system and you inflate the air cell, it's not going to get tighter on your body. The way you feel it on the surface is the way it's going to feel in the water. And we do use the fast text quick release on both shoulders so you can get in and out quickly. And on a side note, the other there's two reasons why you wear a crotch strap or the harness style BC. When you're floating on the surface, you're sort of sitting in the saddle. So you don't have to over tighten the chest at this point. But more importantly, particularly if you're wearing double cylinders, when you start heading down, the cylinders don't slide forward and smack you in the back of the head. 
Okay. So, oh, there we go. All right. So sizing on this, they are sized and it's pretty much unisex. Uh, and they give you an idea on the sizing. If I'm wearing a dry suit, I actually will use an extra large. My, my chest size is a 46. I am for the height. I wind up being 70 inches. So I'm a little bit in between, but I'm 195 pounds. But now the reason why for the bigger size, and this is important. It really is determining what type of diving you're doing. You really have to size the harness to your body, to your thickest thermal protection that you're wearing. You can always make it smaller, but it does reach a point where you really can't make it much bigger. So let's get out of this for a moment so I can go through those features. And we'll stop the share. And here I am back again. So let's, let's take a look at, at the IQ light and the proper way to actually put it on. The first thing that you'll do is you'll loosen up all the straps, get everything loose on the unit itself. And don't have the crotch strap engaged. Flip the unit on. And the first thing you do is the sternum strap. You see where the shoulders are sitting in tight and close to my body at this point. Now the sizing from an extra large to a medium large is when I'm, I'm wearing a medium large now because I'm just wearing a shirt, this is where the ring should be. Now, if you put this harness on and the rings wind up over here, you'll wind up staring at your BC hose. So you have to make sure that it's down in the right position. Then the next thing you do is the waist strap. Now with the waist strap, it actually goes over your belly button. It's not like you're a gunslinger. There should be enough room underneath here to put a weight belt. And then the final thing is to si tighten up the sizing. So now I have the harness that fits my body shape. Make sure it isn't so tight that you have difficulty breathing. And when you cross your arms, you'll notice that the harness isn't moving at all. So you have the mobility to work with your camera, work with your hands, work with your body, whatever you have to do. There's another feature also on this type of unit. You can, if you want to, slide in a plate. It was actually a stainless steel plate on the inside. It is a Velcro pocket inside the pad, and you can slide in a stainless steel or aluminum plate. Now, I, I tend to work, I'm old school just the way it is. I always dive, when I'm diving with a harness like this, I always have an aluminum plate on the inside. I like the rigidity of the plate on the back. It's what I feel comfortable in. But if I need to save weight, an aluminum plate's only roughly two pounds, slightly less. It really doesn't change anything when it comes to the weighting and, tra and traveling. So you get the right size. You have the pockets located in the back and it'll tell you two pounds max, 2.2, if you want to get technical. And there is room in the back in order to slide two cam straps in the back of the unit. So two cam straps for stability while you're diving with it. And, and what makes it rigid? Your cylinder actually makes it rigid at that point. So you don't need the cam band to firm it up. The tank will actually make it rigid. So the, the rule of thumb is whatever size t-shirt you're wearing is where you would start. So if you're wearing a large t-shirt, medium large will work. About 70% of the people that try them on usually tend to fit in that. When you're going from one size to the other, where the extra small and small go, it's two inches difference on the length of the epaulette. The back is always the same size. All the plate, the plate will fit in any size harness that you have. So you do have the ability to move up and down in the sizing without having to worry about getting another plate. So going back, we'll keep moving forward from there because now we're actually gonna get into my, my particularly favorite harness. And this happens to be the Comfort Harness 3. This was very important. And when Thomas came up with this and presented it at the distributors meeting, I, I was like, yeah, okay, this, this is a stroke of luck. 
for those of you who are working in the business, trying to figure out how much gear to bring into a dive shop, you do have to bring in, and, and I'll tell you right now, the most common sizes in the, in the uh, IQ light usually winds up being medium large and extra large are, big, are our biggest sellers. Extra small and small, not, not so much, but they need to be sized. And you can actually get an idea of the sizing by just remembering that the epaulets are going to be two inches difference between each size. But we've reached a point now, and it, it's become difficult for dealers bringing in inventory. They, they don't want to have four, because you, you know what happens. It's like, yeah, I brought in a, a large, and of course, they need an extra large. And I brought in a medium large, and of course, they need a small. So we tried to address that in another way. And we've done this with a few harnesses. This is the Comfort Harness 3. Now, the, the Comfort Harness 3, and I'll show you the adjustment in a moment, from extra small right through extra large. One size will fit practically everybody. The, the shoulders are heavily padded with neoprene. It does have seven D-rings on the unit. You can get it with either stainless steel or aluminum. So you're in, instantly set up in order to dive with this, whether you want to wear a single tank, set of double tanks, if you want to work with it in terms of a, I want a, a single tank adapter, because the plates actually have slots in them so that you can work the cam bands right through the slots if you don't want to use a single tank adapter. The only drawback on this is this isn't, this is rounded slightly. So if you're wearing a really heavy cylinder, like a steel 100, it will wiggle a little bit, particularly on the surface. It won't move much underwater, but there is the potential if you're really bouncing around back and forth, you may want to use a single tank adapter. Now, we've also addressed that. And when we get into wings, we'll show you another way we address that so you don't have to use a single tank adapter. But if you're old school, sometimes that's the way you want to work. It still comes with the sternum strap. It does come with a two inch crotch strap. And that ring in the front, by the way, is called the scooter ring. For those of you who aren't aware of how that actually works is you'll have that crotch strap a little snugger you'll you'll have a harness on your scooter you clip it off and you allow the harness to pull your whole body through the water you don't hang on to it for dear life that way you just control it divers that have been doing some really long projects wearing scooters use the scooter strap so basically the crotch strap is now pushing against the tush they have their feet up in position they trim themselves out and the scooter pulls them along and they just basically glide, guide the scooter with their hands. And a skilled diver, a skilled scooter diver can actually work it with one hand and carry a big camera system in the opposite hand. There is one big feature and everything on all the product on OMS is moving forward, moving forward, finding potential weak points. Now the fast text clips last and work really, really well. There's, there's never been a failure that I've known. I've worked for a few dive companies where a fast text clip failed just while you were diving. Usually a fast text clip, quote unquote, fails when you drop your scuba tank on it. It's made out of plastic, so it may crack. And, and if one of the fittings on the inside break, just so you know, on most of the fast text design, if you break one of those little tabs and you put it together, it doesn't unlock, it stays locked. Your shoulder strap, just like on the, I, on the IQ, will actually let, enable you to move and work a little bit easier when you're wearing particularly heavy cylinders than if you want to kill a bailout or a stage bottle. Now, for those of you who are like, I already own four stainless steel plates from so Pick the Company. We actually have these harnesses available separately so that you could put it on any plate out there made pretty much by anybody. I haven't met anybody who's had a plate where it's not going to fit at this point. But these are what we call a Cobra style buckle. They use them for climbing. It's not a Cobra buckle. We're calling it the Cobra style because the way it unclips is basically, and I'll show you in a minute, just pushing these two little tabs and it unlocks. But the ones from OMS are specifically designed for saltwater immersion. The springs, all the clips, everything is stainless steel. So it, it's going to last. You can change the shoulder strapping size. And it's not difficult at all to do while you're reading through the harness, by the way. So you can see this. this it just takes two fingers. You just push it down. Boom, you're out. It's not going to accidentally unlock 
It's a small, flat little setup that you'll work with your body, large rings in order to do the adjustment, and it's sewn in place. And before you even ask, no, they're not available separately, because I get that question all the time. So that's just the way that works. But if we were going to make an adjustment, as you can see, just like in the, the picture, it tells you the different sizes. And all you really have to do in order to change the way this is going to work, there is a just a strap in the back that covers the shoulder strap. Just simply undo the strap. Take it out. And now you can pull it longer. Then lock it down. And what I always recommend to people is don't do both shoulders at once because that winds up being a little confusing. Put it back together again on one side. Put the harness on, check the fit on where the epaulette is actually going to end. And then you just match up the other side. So you can actually go in between sizing. You don't have, if, so, if the extra so Pete, large, it'll go, yes. Some people can't see for some reason um, when you're doing the live because you have the PowerPoint up. Okay, what, what do I need to repeat? What do uh, they I'm not quite sure, but, uh, or they may not be able to see it because of the black on black with the, <laughs> with the harness. Yeah, well, we don't make them in any other color. Yeah, so, I know. So, oh, well, there's also, as you see, a link over here. And, and by the way, this, this, we have what's called DUI University. You can log on to Dive DUI University, and this entire presentation is there, and that's a live link. So you show the instructions. So I'll, I'll do it again. So you're, all you're doing is up on the shoulder strap. You are releasing the shoulder strap. Is that better, Jack? It's just hard to see you with the black on black and the camera. Yeah, yeah you can see okay. it better now. Okay. So you basically can slide it up or go the opposite way, pull it out, get the sizing that you need, and then just lock it back into the tri-glide on the back and that'll and that'll keep the harness from moving so it's not going to fall apart on you underwater and it's actually double webbing going through so the epaulette the uh, excuse me the triglide is not taking all the strain the webbing is actually taking all the strain so here you got your sizing which is very similar to works what works with an iq light but it's one size they usually ship default sizing is large and it's easy to change and move it back and forth so that you can get the sizing you need. And for those of you that just want the harness and wish to put it on your own plate, the assembly instructions, I mean, I, I can do it in like 10 minutes and I'm sure you can do it in five. So there you go. So it's, it's not all that difficult to do. So Pete, I think what it is is some people that are watching this on their mobile phones, um, the mobile phones don't have the picture in the picture like on the computer desktop versions. Okay. Well, I can, I'll tell you what, I'll, uh, we're going to get out of this and I'll, and I'll do it again. So I can actually answer, get everybody's questions answered that way. So I'll stop the share. So one more time, for those of you who have already seen this twice, it's time for coffee or biological break. And you know what I mean? So you're basically opening up the webbing on the top and then you just pull on the strap or pull in the opposite direction and work the pad into the shoulder. So going larger, just undo the back like I did, pull it out, then lock it in or pull it back and work the, the uh, pad up on the inside. There is extra little lockdowns on here that you may have to remove if you really want to get into smaller sizes. Another feature on here too, some of our air cells do come with a pull on the shoulder and there's actually little tabs located on the shoulder straps so that you can run the string through. So it'll run right down on the side, either on the outside or on the inside. So once again, it's, it's all about customizing it to yourself. That better, Jack? Okay. 
So let's let's talk about the the next one. And what I'll do is is when I start doing any adjustments, I'll I'll get out of uh, the the screen so you can see it a little bit easier. Now the smart stream harness. Now when I I first met Thomas, he's very much into you know he's a DIR instructor, very much in that type of diving. I think it's a great way to dive. I, I like minimalistic myself, but you know, I also like padding and I like a little bit of comfort and it depends on the type of diving that I'm doing and we all do different types. So that's an individual thought. The smart stream harness is that one piece of continuous webbing and the webbing slides to conform to your torso. I'll say one size fits most because I did have a, a, an individual who was for lack of a better term, rather large and nothing fit. When he put the harness on, even this one, he was four inches short on clipping off his uh, waistband. You could actually change the entire waistband. It's not difficult to do. There is one grommet they had to add. It has five stainless steel D-rings. You can buy the harness separately. Either comes complete with the stainless steel or the aluminum hardware already assembled. So it makes it a little bit easier for the diver. You don't necessarily have to go out and buy something extra if you want to use your own. They're really simple to put together. All right. The other thing too, on the right hand on the right hand side, there's actually an extra buckle placement on there. And people always say, "Why you need two buckles there?" Well, when I show you the the whole harness slides through a different assembly, and you're actually able to put a light canister there. And when you're moving the the, the torso harness in order to snug it up to your body, the light canister won't move. So you don't have to take your light canister off as you normally do in a, in a simple harness. You have to take the canister off, get out of the unit, or some people put a buckle there to hold it in position, but you can't make any adjustments. Here you can make an adjustment. And, and this would be compatible with all of our DUI or OMS weight systems so that if you want an integrated system on the harness, you can do it here too. We do have shoulder straps available for it. So if you want a little extra padding, you can do that. The great thing about these particular shoulder straps is you don't have to take the harness apart in order to add them. It's just Velcro lockdowns on it that go onto the padding and slides up to the back of the plate and it'll hold it in position. So let, let's take a look at the smart stream harness. This particular one does have the padding. So as I said before, it is all one piece. Let me just loosen this up. That slides easy. This slides easy. This particular one has the uh, weight pockets already on it. So when you're putting the unit on, yeah, you usually don't do that while wearing a scuba tank. I get that. Okay, so, but after you put the unit on, you can see how low the back plate is on my body. By simply pulling out on the waist strap, this will pull it up into position on where you comfortably want it. So you usually reach back and you can touch the top of the plate. That's the general position for most people. Now, one thing when you want to get out, is just slide forward, your arms out, or put your arm back in, lock it down. Now you can actually set these up where, and people do it, they'll put an extra piece, an extra triglide on there. So it only goes down so far and they'll put an extra triglide on the front. So it only goes back so far when they get it out. So it stays locked down in position. Now, how does this all work? Well, it's real simple. There is an extra piece right here built into the system that the slot that this slides through and it slides through an extra piece of stainless steel. It locks in and it holds itself in position by using a tri-glide. 
So that'll handle any of the weight that you're working with. It'll lock in, move back and forth. And if you already own a simple harness, just one piece of webbing, and you want to make it adjustable without spending a lot of money, we do have the adapter kit where it's the lower sections on here. They don't have the weight pockets on them, but we have the lower sections on here that so you were actually able to adapt it to any stainless steel plate that's out there. So you're not locked into one thing. This particular one does have the, can the uh, pads on it. And the way the padding works, it's just lot, just basically the Velcro tab will hold this in place. And there is an extra piece of Velcro. And it just slides out. And it is goes that, back in the same way. Does that hold it pretty tight? So like when you're going in with, um, I guess, if you're less flexible, so to speak, and you always grab it and you're with your dry suit or hitting it with something, does it the pad stay flat or does it? The, the pad stays flat. There's actually three of these lockdowns on it. So it stays really tight to the webbing. So you don't, you don't have to worry about constantly sliding your elbow between the pad and the strap. So that, that stays up nice and nice and tight. Good question, Jack. Boy, my office is gonna be messy by the end of this. I thought it's always like that. <laughs> no, there'll be gear all over. That's the, that's the best part. So, uh, So we, we do have different types of weight pockets that you can slide onto this. And, and for those of you that are not going to be here all day long to go through the accessories, I included this too. One of our newest and most popular weight pockets that we have is the vertical weight pocket. This will hold six pounds of weight. I'll bring in the other ones and show it to you separately. And we have the simple ballast system. You'll love these pockets that I'm good about to talk about. And then we have the ballot systems that'll use 15 pounds on each side. Now, people are always like, so what's the extra strap for? Well, you're gonna slide it on the two inch webbing and you can actually take those extra clips and lock it onto your chest strap. So when you're st standing on the surface, the weight pockets don't drop down to your sides. They'll actually stay in position. And, and we use systems like this, some of my public safety teams I work with like this because the diver who's a, the safety diver can just pop the weights out Go do what he has to do, sit back down real quick, and they pop the weights right back in position without having to have the de-kit. We also have horizontal weight pockets, and they'll they'll hold a lot of lead. It, it's usually a combination of soft and the hard lead. You can go up to 20 pounds on each side. These are also sold as a set. And we have the new DUI ballast system, which I'll speak about in detail in a moment, which has really, really changed a lot of things. I actually start, started diving with those myself. The, uh, this pocket system that we have here has the six pound pocket underneath. There is an exterior pocket for you to put a few different things in there, depending on what you want to work with. And it does have a piece of bungee cord. So you're like, so what, what do I want to stuff in there? Well, first you, you take care of the other stuff that we don't need that's there. Sorry, Dan, you'll have to get me another piece of uh, bungee in order to lock that down. But we have a pocket that's large enough so you can actually put in, for those of you who are traveling divers, and it's like, okay, this is great. we got this SMB that always seems to be floating somewhere. And then we got this spool that's always floating somewhere. Or it's one more thing I got to clip off before I go into the water. This particular system, you could slide the SMB and slide in the pocket. And of course, you would lock it down to the bungee. So don't yell at me about that. And then close it off. And you got everything in one container. Now, we sell these a la carte deliberately and it just slides through the two inch webbing on the back so that if you wanted to wear one on the right one on the left or some people like having both because they don't have any pockets on their wetsuits this works out well it does come with the d-ring so when you have it on the left side you have some place to clip off your pressure gauge you've got one on the right side if you prefer not to have it these are actually removable so that you could take them out, you just pop the bungee off, pull the whole unit out on the inside, and you don't have a pocket. So we, we've set it up so that once again, even though the harness is modular, the weight pockets become modular. Because if you don't want to use that, or what I see in a lot of combinations, is people putting this on their left-hand side, 
And then they just put the standard six pound pocket on the right. And this is just a simple pull and it'll come right out. You could do the, uh, the weighting the way you want it at that point. But we always sell these a la carte. So if you go into your dive shop and go, yeah, I want the six pound system. There is no six pound system. You have to buy one of each. And they always come with the D-ring on it. And if you don't want it, you can always take it off and you can always put it back on later. When it comes to those- that, How much weight can that D-ring hold when you're uh, from the weight pocket? Well, it, it, what do you want to put on it, Jack? I mean, it's really designed for a pressure gauge or clipping off a camera. Okay, you're not going to get lifted by it. A lot of people uh, are always asked the question of, uh, can you put like a stage bottle attached to it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll do. Don't forget with the stage bottle, most of the weight when on the surface is on your chest. It's gravity. It's going to hang there. The clip on the side is simply to stabilize the bottle in order to keep the position. So there's not a lot of weight on that particular clip. All the weight on the stage bottle is actually up on your chest. And we also do this with the other OMS pocket and the difference on this one. And they do, they all of them come with the removable clip. But this one here, the inner pocket can hold more weight. And there's actually little pockets on the inside. And this is important because with these little pockets on the inside, if you own this system and you're just diving down south and you just want to use less weight, maybe eight pounds, six pounds, you put the weight, you always put the weight toward the back half of the pocket, not to the front with rear inflation. Back half of the pocket will help you keep more upright when you're in the water. And for those of you that are thinking, well, I always float face down with my, with my back mounted system, you're probably putting too much air in the wing and you're wearing the weight in the wrong position. So if you ever really wanna learn how to dive back mount, put it on the 10 year old, they figure it out, real quick because they go how they they don't think it through they just react to it it's exactly what i did with my daughter i'm looking forward to doing my granddaughter my my daughter has never won a stabilizing jacket she's been diving back mount since she's 10 years old so that'll give you a fit and with these once again two inch and they're ambidextrous right and left side but these are only sold as a kit now moving from there and this has been a big jump forward for dui on a product And what's paramount with DUI, it's all about safety, keeping divers safe since that business started in 1963. The original harness system, and most of you are familiar with it, had the weight pockets that, that hold roughly 20 pounds on each side, 40 pounds of weight. The difference on the original system, and we still do have them, is you would pull a cord out and then the pocket would come off. That's no problem getting it out. The drawback on that particular style, and that style is used by a lot of companies, that you have to remember to remove that cord on a regular basis, or it will actually take a set and become almost impossible to pull out, particularly in an emergency. The thing is, is putting it back together, people usually draw straws on who's going to put it together again, because it does take a little bit of weaving. I need to wear my reading glasses when I'm working on it. So that's one of the problems that we dealt with that. So the next system, and this was being able to be easily seen, a nice bright yellow handle. And when you pull it out, the whole pocket comes out, but this is a docking station and a pin. And basically think in terms of a docking station that's on the bottom. You just simply line them up. Now, you know, this is never going to go together properly when you're, when you're live on, on Zoom. Oh, look at that. I did it. So that's how long it takes in order to put the pocket back together again. Now, the other advantage that DUI also came out with this because this is a, it's called the weight and trim three. It comes on a harness system. You can purchase the pocket separately. So it'll fit on any bit of two inch webbing. So you can customize your pockets. We also have the pockets in a 10 pound size on each pocket. And the one way I, I like to dive Personally, if I need to wear heavier weight, I'm diving one of our newer dry suits now that's three mil thick. We talked about it yesterday. The CD 300, 150 weight undergarment underneath it. 
just by the nature of the material, the, the material is very dense, the material is very warm, the material is very buoyant. I needed to wear 24 pounds of lead, which is 10 more pounds than I normally wear with my TLS 350, wearing 300 weight undergarments. So instead of trying to pound all that weight into my BC pockets, I wore the harness and my BC, 14 on the BC, 10 pounds on the pocket. I split the weight. If I did have a problem, had to ditch the weight, I'd only ditch 10 pounds because I don't, I want to go up under some reasonable control. I don't want to go up like a Polaris missile. So that's, that's something you can discuss with your instructor. So moving forward from there and, and questions are, are always welcome, but you'll probably save them to the end or I'll be getting emails, which is fine. Either way, happy to help you any way we can. So we've already got the ballast system and eventually this thing is gonna move. No, we don't wanna be asking people to unmute. All right, there we go. So that was the last slide. If there's any questions, you've got my contact information. And Jack, I actually stayed on time. <laughs> um, yeah, good job. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it, time is, I guess, it's okay. I mean, if we run long sometimes, if it's, if it's good information that people need to know, then that's fine. That's the way I look at it. Um, so I had a question, but I, I didn't know how to quite interpret it. And you were talking about, I think, the, the six pound utility pocket at the time. So I'm not sure if it was for that or not, but it said a little hard to clip in weight pocket in that. Any suggestions? Well, actually, um, I, I know where they're going on this. And, and the problem that we have when you, when you have, when you pull this pocket out, yeah, they, they come about real easy. And, and we deal with this. It, it's a struggle for every manufacturer is you don't want the weights to fall out easily. So when you're putting it back in place, you actually have to sometimes use a second hand. So you can hear that click and lock it in. If you're using one hand to lock in, it's best to squeeze from the top. Get your thumb on the, out, on the outside where you could feel the, the opposite side of the clip and just squeeze it together with your hand and that'll lock it in place. So you'll, you'll pull it out real quick, real easy. You'll get it in position and then just, you could hear the click, it locks in. You need to give a squeeze. So obviously on, on these without the pocket, you could take it apart. And when you go to lock it in place, you're basically doing the same thing through the pocket and just give it a squeeze to lock out. This is not a dual action release, it's single. There's nothing to squeeze. You just pull it out, lock it in. And I just wanna uh, clarify something for, for people using the weight and trim three system is that docking plate will accept either the 10 pound or the 20 pound weight pocket. So it's not like you have to switch out the whole unit. You just swap out the pocket itself. Um, and I actually took advantage of that while diving doing a shark dive where they want you to be over overweighted. Um, and normally I just wear the 10 pound weight pockets, but for that trip, I brought the 20 pound weight pockets and I, <laughs> without changing anything on the system, I just put different weight pockets on there and overloaded myself so I could sink to the bottom like a rock. <laughs> exactly, we've, we've in, in certain products, we are able to, to adapt to the modular system in order to work on, on, on units like that to make it a little easier for our customers, our divers, in order to get their units to work painlessly as possible. Uh, just a real quick question. Um, well, this is for me, because I know we have other harnesses that you didn't talk about, um, but we do have the side mount harness and the side mount adapters that uh, attach to the different systems. Okay, well, we can talk about, we've only got a couple of minutes. Yeah, I just wanna make people aware that there are side mount options that we have, not just back mount. Yeah. Well, the, the simplest option that we have is actually this, this particular plate with the butt, plate, butt pad on it. And the way this works is you'll actually put your wing and your harness underneath it. And anything with 11 inches on center, this will work with. And then you use what we call book screws to lock everything into place. So you're, you're making your own side mount harness because some folks don't even know if they want to do side mount. It's like, well, I'm not gonna spend six, $700 on a side mount rig and find out that I hate it. So this is a little bit more in, in thinking in terms of a kit. So you'd make your own bungees, you put it together. Yes, it does come in black, 
So you can make the change there. But the other function for this, if you're diving CCR or doubles, and you can't find on your rig some place to add a butt plate where they're sold separately, this is 11 inches on center. So it'll actually fit right onto your Revo, right onto your inspiration. If you got your 11 inches on center, just put the wing over it, put your harness, lock it down, and now you'll actually have a butt plate on the bottom so that you can attach your uh, your bailout at this point. So, and, and normally it has a, a, I've been experimenting with my gear. That, that one's mine. So it, it does have the rail system on the, on the bottom. And you just run the crotch strap right through the clips on the bottom. If, if you so desire, you can email me and I'll actually send you the instruction manual. It is on our website also on how to work with that particular system. And then we have the side stream. Now this particular unit is 27 pounds of lift. It is redundant. So there's two inner bags on the inside. This has an oral inflator. You cut this to length for your own, own size. It's, it's not, doesn't have a power inflator on it. So it is oral inflation. The other inflation assembly is located on the bottom. It does have tie downs to lock the ring down. The dump valve for the primary is located right behind your head. There's a pull cord right here that runs down and sits to the front. It's what's called a split plate system. So you've actually got the upper and lower plate So one of the questions is, um, are we looking to get a larger lift bag at all for other than 27 pounds? On, on this particular unit, no, that's where we're staying at the immediate moment. I, I have people that they want more lift, they actually go to the, the uh, back unit where they make their own, the-, the uh, yeah. Right, I, I, I know I, I've, I, I dive that uh, side mount setup and it works really well for doing the I guess the Mexico style yeah. uh, aluminum tank side mount setup. So mm -hmm. it does work well for that. It, it was primarily designed for that. And, and as far as you don't add weight pockets to it, there's actually a spine weighting system that you can add to the inside. It simply opens up. And you can put the weight down the pad right on your back and it is compartmentalized. So you can set the weight up to help get yourself in proper trim. It'll hold up to 15 pounds of weight. Okay, so um, we're, we're coming up to the end of the session. Um, and so just to give you, Pete, a, a small little break, um, we're gonna take a little five minute break. Um, so people can get up, walk around for a second. Um, we will restart the Facebook live event then, um, and also uh, start again at 12 o'clock with the how to choose a wing. So please come back in just a few minutes. Again, put any messages in, in, the, in the chat window that you want to ask Pete. Um, we'll get to those uh, when they're appropriate. And if you need to speak with any of the DUI staff, please request it and I can split you into your own breakout room and you can discuss whatever you want with, well, not whatever you want, but you can discuss <laughs> diving things with <laughs> different staff. So thank you, Pete. All right, see you in a few minutes.